swimming in Lake Baldenai, an artificial lake on the River Ruhr. The bathing spot is new. For 40 years, swimming wasn't allowed here. The water was too polluted. It's really nice. I'd like it to be bigger, but it's wonderful to be able to cool off on a hot day like today when it's 30 degrees. The swimming pool is way too small. I used to come here with friends when my children were little. They could play in the sand but couldn't go in the water. Now it's a big hit. For decades, the city of Essen was dominated by the mining industry. Coal was mined deep underground and processed in coking plants. Pollutants contaminated the soil and water. The mine shut down about 30 years ago. But the city is still struggling with their legacy. We couldn't install an underground sewer system because of the subsidence caused by mining. The wastewater was fed through canals into the Emscher River. The river was unusable and the canals were also polluted. We call them Köttelbecken and they smell awful. Soon, these Köttelbecken will be gone. The sewage canals are slowly being moved underground. The massive project began about a quarter century ago. In two years, it will finally be completed. Fish will return to our rivers and streams. We'll be able to go paddling and children will be able to play in them. It's very moving to think that this badly damaged natural environment will be returned to us after 100 years. That's as it should be. It's environmental justice. Essen also has another environmental challenge to contend with, traffic. After the Second World War, urban planners built a network of multi-lane roads across the city. Now, the green capital of Europe 2017 is trying to convince drivers to ride the subway, buses or bicycles. But driving is convenient here, so it's a hard sell. Driving is still appealing because our infrastructure has been designed with cars in mind. Driving is fast and there aren't many traffic jams. That makes it harder to convince people to switch to bicycles or public transport. These other modes of transportation need to have massive advantages over driving in order to compete. This new bicycle highway is one important step in getting local drivers to make the switch. The first section, which is 11 kilometers long, is already finished. By 2020, the bike highway is supposed to extend 100 kilometers through the Ruhr region. The first stretch, which runs along a former railway route, is already proving popular with local commuters. The cycle highway bypasses all the major traffic arteries. There isn't a single traffic light on the entire 11-kilometer stretch. And we're going to extend the path from Duisburg all the way to Bochum. The cycle highway has some major advantages. First of all, it's a lot faster. You don't have to stop at the lights or wait at intersections. And it's very safe. The project is a major step forward in creating a climate-friendly city. But Essen doesn't plan to stop there. The city wants to continue moving forward in terms of mobility and environmental protection. People don't want to own a car anymore. They'd rather just access one when they need it. The future is electromobility, car sharing and bike sharing. With a smartphone app, people will be able to locate a bike or a car share or public transportation options. Going digital will let people connect intelligently. With nature slowly replacing asphalt, the remnants of Essen's coal mining industry are slowly vanishing. Today, this past has been relegated to museums, and the city is pushing forward many environmental initiatives. But it will take decades for the soil and water to recover. After heavy rains, pollution washes into Lake Baldenai. Then the reservoir is closed for bathing until pollution levels normalize. Today, though, the lake is open for swimming, and local residents are making the most of it.